premier uh, business school in the country, I am in the bar. She is about 40 years old. Uh, she has been at home for the last 10 years. And there were 30 uh, girls in her class. 15 of them are not working because of looking after children. I just did a rough calculation of the income loss, 10 years, and the kind of pay that they get. And it is close to 2 to $3 million, which each of those women has lost. And, you know, it's not small money for anybody. So uh, this is because they feel obliged. You know, some of them are obviously taking a cut in their personal lifestyle. Some are not because they're well off. But definitely savings have been affected. But this is because they're at home to make sure that the children go to classes. It's not that those children are spending time with them. You know, in India, it's a very competitive society. Every child is doing piano and sports and chess and whatnot. So uh, what uh, is something that we are proposing is that you have value-added after-school services in the school, or what you said, lengthening the school day, essentially, or at least creating an option so that you do your studies till a certain hour, and after that you can take on uh, more activities, uh, the extracurricular activities, which they do anyway. Um, the other thing I'd like to share here is there's a st in a study where they talked about the fo uh, net low net fertility rates, especially Italy, I think, is 1.3. It's one of the lowest. And the reason they said is that the child care and the cultural, both the child care facilities are not as easy or as affordable as, say, France or the Scandinavian countries. And also there is a cultural lag same way as in India, that the woman is really expected to take some time off to look after her children, at least in the what is termed in gender terms as the lost decade. You have 10 years which you spend at home with your children. Um, so this is, um, so they say that actually in a lot of southern Europe, the rates have fallen in Spain and Italy and all, because... Uh, People postpone having children because they know they'll have to give up their careers for a certain amount of time. So that's why they don't have children as easily. So the basically, uh, after all this, child care, uh, um, Ambassador Ibsen shared the policy where they're looking at long days. What are the policies in your country to take care of this issue of, you know, at least uh, keeping the woman free till about five so that she can put in a full work day? Child care and maternity leave, who pays for it? Thank you very much. I was hoping for an easy morning. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, but because you put the finger on the on the crucial aspects. Like, I was I was uh, speaking before you like, about this trap of long maternity leave like, as a career killer for, for a lot of women uh, because they're out of a job for many years. Like although generously provided and there I can Allay your fears, like by the state. So it's the the compulsory, uh, the protection period of three months. Like the company has to pay. Uh, after that, the government takes over uh, for the for the payment of uh, uh, the maternity subsidy. Basically. Um, but but uh, we had an uh, an in investigation, an opinion poll, like among young mothers. Uh, what they would like, and uh, the vast majority was an eighty percent answer was good early child care facilities, so they can get, go back to work. Um, it is uh, uh, not something that uh, uh, is easily organized because it's a very costly thing, but we are slowly, slowly getting there. Like it was unthinkable of having child care facilities like a few decades ago. Before three years old, no child would go to a kindergarten. Nowadays, you know, like we're at the one year level, more or less, but not universal coverage, I'm afraid to say. So we really still need some time to guarantee that. Uh, we have now concluded that uh, making it compulsory to uh, get your child into child care right, as of the age of three, and it's it's free like in Austria. So <laughs> you uh, 
don't run any costs, but we made it compulsory because it also gives better results in your first school. It gives better results like for the social integration of kids. It gives uh, better results for a huge immigrant population. Right? So they learn the language. They, they learn to interact with, with uh, kids from Austria. Um, so it, it has only positive effects aside from the, from the empowerment. Now, uh, we are experimenting with two things. Number one is the shared, the parently. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot report the same figures as our colleague from Iceland. Uh, it's still a little bit of a, uh, <laughs> it's more the exception. And, and it's based on this two year maternity leave. Right? So you get an additional year if the husband also takes it. So you have then three years of maternity okay. leave or, or, or parent and leave. They compulsorily go to and school. then they compulsorily go to school, <laughs> uh, which is a little bit of a stretch, right? uh, to put it mildly. And most parents don't want to stay uh, at home for three years like, out of their job, like, just uh, taking care of the kids. Um, the, the income issue right, is a pressing one. And... Uh, so we are working on that and, and maybe even come to the conclusion that we have to shorten the paid maternity leave uh, and uh, make it easier to, to have uh, uh, child care system uh, in place and child care institutions in place. I just wanted to say one word about your example of the class of your sister, right? And the 50% like are, are not working, although they have a fantastic education. Uh, that is not the case in Austria. And I tell you why. Right? Because especially the better educated ones, they can organize, they can manage, they have the income right, to manage, and they have a family system and the, and the husband who would probably support them in saying, okay, you spent like 10 years studying at the best schools in the world, right? you better go and work uh, instead of staying at home with the uh, children. It is just below that that we have the, the attitude issue, where then also men in Austria are maybe like we're part of Southern Europe in that respect. Like uh, they're, they're, they say, fine, you, know, you stay at home, I'll, I'll go and work. Um, you have an inc a regular income. Like, why do you need a perfect career? Why do you need a perfect work biography? Um, I'll retire. You get my pen. You can share in my pension. Or you don't need your own pension, etc. Like these are attitudes which are slow in changing, and we're working on that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, best and slowly. Well, oh, child care and yes, uh, uh, well, who I pays come from a leave. country where we don't have, as I said before, these figures or this uh, wide uh, long period for maternity leave. And uh, in terms of, but of course, I mean, the, the, the problem is, is the same uh, all, all over the world. And uh, I can say that in terms of child care, especially, I would uh, look at the things by two different angles. So the, the angle of um, what is possible now, uh, thanks to, the, to the, uh, how our society is structured and how it works. And again, I, I see a number of similarities yours and I have to say that in these last 20 years let's say when uh, the presence of women in work was much more considerable we have uh, revisited uh, let's say the role of grandpa <coughs> and grandma uh, in, the, in our society because they really are uh, the, the resource for, uh, and, and the solution for many for many young couples so I mean and I have to say that was sort of positive things because give more sense and uh, participation also to the third age that sometimes is a bit uh, forgotten, tend to be forgotten in uh, society like ours that are more individualistic no? let's say in comparison with other societies, especially in Asia. And uh, the second angle is the angle of the government. Again, our uh, latest uh, new government is putting a great attention on, uh, on reinforcing the structure especially of maternal schools, because this is, of course, the, the first and main uh, uh, point to, uh, to be addressed. So we don't have in Italy still a net or have I mean, a 
and has complete an overall network, maternal school that can uh, accommodate all the all the requests. And this is a great structural effort that our government is doing now to bring uh, this level, uh, this uh, coverage all, all over our our national territory. But again, I think that the matching of the two the two angle gives uh, the idea of how. Uh, part of what the government can do, of course, the government is the expression of, of the society where we live, but the most important thing is, again, how the society is structured. So how, how the, what, which are the pillars of, of the society and, and uh, which are the person where you can refer when you have uh, an, uh, a need in terms of your daily life. And so I, again, see in this case the family, the structural family that is still there and is still giving the response both in the modern and Thank you. And uh, I think you've solved both the problems, right, with parental leave. So there's no <laughs> discrimination against women <laughs> and longer hours. So I'd like to throw the floor open to questions. Yeah. I mean, actually. Yeah. Um, excellencies. Uh, wonderful that you're here, though I expected to see women tonight, I mean this morning. Um, no, not at all. They say um, gender bender all begins in the head, as you said, in the right attitude. Um, my observation regarding political change and political will, as you said, was that we, as a country, we've already signed the CEDAW, which is Convention on Elimination of Discrimination Against Women, for the workplace. Through legislation, we haven't yet recognized the importance of something like marital rape, uh, it, we believe that the domestic violence bill takes care of that. So the attitudinal change in society is actually, shall I say, constrained by the fact that we are not a homogeneous society. We may be technically all Indian or whatever, but the cultural differences within the country, that's something as simple for a corporate work ethic, like a uniform civil code to come in, which doesn't, doesn't allow that. So you have a lot of things that interfere with the freedom of women to come in to the mainstream. So my question was that how much have you, as advanced countries, of course, the barbershop idea is also very good to be able for you to convince our leaders to do something about uh, changing their attitudes while you play with their hair. <laughs> is how far does legislation, you said in your country, uh, Excellency Ibsen, that um, women brought it about but as far as the first world is concerned, legislation plays a very important role because even courts cannot do anything, even corporates cannot do anything unless it's first mandated in parliament. And presence or absence of women sometimes becomes unimportant. So tell us the importance of the epoch-changing laws in your country that have made entrepreneurship for women possible. Is it addressed to any particular? Okay. All three. <laughs> the first world, as we have it. But A comes before I. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm not sure that I got the, the last part of your question, the, the punchline here. Could you repeat that? The epoch changing laws. The, the epoch changing laws. The epoch changing laws. laws. Okay. okay. Changing the, laws. Really uh, my, my view on this may be different because I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> I'm a political scientist. And we tend to, uh, to, to differ with the, with the legalistic view of things. Now, don't misunderstand me. Legislation is extremely important. Uh, you have to have a legal framework. So. Uh, People can pursue the cases before the court, and we know what the rules are, and we know what our rights are. What I was simply stressing when I was speaking about the women and women movement, about they brought about the change, is that sometimes.